bestsellers, welcome back. So today I am going to uh, give you my top 10 books from 2020. And I've selected out of the 50 or so books I've read over the past year, 10 that I find to be the most useful to authors. And I've split up the books into craft books, so books on actual writing and creating your books. And then I have uh, listed several business books because if you know, if you follow this channel and you know anything about me, I really, really reiterate that being an author, being an indie author uh, is a career and your books and your brand is a business. So you do need to learn marketing and business skills to uh, to have a successful author career. So I'm going to cover the the books, business books that I think are really most useful to you as an author. So the first uh, set is going to be uh, books on writing, and I am going to select Mr. Chuck Palahniuk's Consider This as my first pick. Uh, if you watch this channel, you know I'm a big fan of Chuck, and uh, I really, really love his uh, recent 2020 book. Uh, it is part memoir, part writing guide, and it's 100% Chuck. I mean, it's it's punchy, and it's got that beat that, that Chuck writes in, that kind of rhythm that he uses. Um, just really dark and funny and interesting stories about his life and incredibly practical tips for writing. Second on the list is Save the Cat Writes a Novel. Uh, many of you writers have heard of this book. I think it's been around quite a while and the original book that it was based on has been around for a long, long time, Save the Cat, which is a screenwriting guide. Uh, so this was adapted to writing the writing of novels. And it is a, it's a formula book and I'm not like super into formulas, but I'm into understanding all of the elements of formulaic writing in order to throw it out the window and do my own thing, right? <laughs> but uh, the Save the Cat method works with uh, beats and beats are the way to propel your story forward to keep your readers uh, engaged tension and conflict and um you know it is structure tone and pace uh i the snowflake method is another book that i read a long time ago that is addresses this and then i have used other methods like uh, inside outline and story mapping uh so whether you're a pantser or a plotter or whether you like to use these types of methods and formulas i suggest that you study them so my third pick is by the illustrious Mr. Stephen King. Uh, this is an old book, but I read it for the first time in 2020, and it is uh, on writing a memoir of the craft. And, you know, come to think of it, it actually is really kind of similar to uh, Consider This, uh, the, the first book that I mentioned, but put it 30 years ago, right? Uh, you know, it is a slice of life uh, of the, you know, the old school, you know, uh, whole kind of romantic um, writing life uh, of one of the most famous writers in the world. And, you know, it is, you know, again, like part memoir, part guidebook, uh, but a must read. Very excellent, excellent book. Okay, so now I'm going to move into the business books. Uh, and I've picked Donald Miller's Building a Story Brand as the segue because it's part uh, it's actually part writing book and it's part business book. Um, so, uh, you know, if you are a indie author and a self-published author, then you are responsible for marketing yourself. And this book, I think, uh, really speaks to the heart of the writer and it really is in language that we understand because, I mean, really... Donald suggests that we we create our copy and our branding based on stories, uh, story structure uh, and characters, you know. So, I mean, in the story brand, uh, when you're talking about your readers and your customers and who you are, you're positioning people as, you know, the hero and the guide and the antagonist, protagonist, victim, you know. So we've got all of those elements and then we weave them with uh, conflict and juxtaposition, uh, problems and solutions, tension and release. Uh, so 
you know, this book is the perfect marketing book for writers and it is incredibly valuable. And you will, you know, if you follow it to a T, you will, uh, you know, sell a lot of books and you will position yourself and create a beautiful online brand and offline brand. Okay. So number four is probably my favorite marketing book out there. And that is, this is marketing by Seth Godin. And, you know, Donald's my guy. I adore him to pieces, but I'd have to say if I had to pick one marketing book uh, to rule them all, it would be Seth's book. Uh, it is, I I actually have it on Audible, um, and I think I've listened to it probably six times. It is the most practical, quintessential, uh, readable, uh, you know, comprehensive guide on marketing, um, and I highly, highly recommend it. Next up is Choose by Ryan Levesque. And this one is really good for positioning, okay? So um, it is, it's not written for authors per se, but you can really take the method and apply it to your books and your business. Um, so it he provides a lot of tools to understand, uh, you know, where your readers are. We're talking about, you know, where you are, what kind, where you are in genre, or, you know, if you're writing on the coattails of um, another popular book or a group of popular books, or if you're an outlier and you have written something that uh, kind of define, uh, defies the boundaries of what is marketable. And in that case, you're going to have to really do some out of the box thinking in terms of promotion and marketing. So he, he lets you understand where you are positioning wise and where you are in the market and then how to find, uh, in his case, customers, but in our case, readers. And it's a really, really very useful book. Okay, next is Pat Flynn. Pat Flynn, super fans, and he uh, published this one in 2020. And it is, uh, it, this one really is very, very pertinent to us. And that is, you know, how to find and win uh, loyal fans and cultivate that relationship so that they become advocates and pr they promote for you. Uh, really a lot of really useful tips, especially if you're struggling with social media and how to understand that and how to use it and how to, um, yeah, I mean, build loyal fans that want to read every single one of your books and buy everything that you put out. Uh, this book teaches you how, and uh, Pat is, uh, I, this one also I have um, on audiobook, uh, and he's you know he's his language and his uh, the way he presents is um, really entertaining and um, just easy to read or listen to. Okay, so uh, <laughs> from easy to difficult, uh, I'm going to share with you the uh, book that I keep on my bedside table and that I have read many times and I flip open and read um, you know here or there randomly. Uh, and that is The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. Now, the first time I read this book, uh, I thought I was appalled. <laughs> I thought this is like a horrible book. You know, it's like, you know, drive yourself and go through hardships and, uh, and the stoicism. And I, you know, had just started understanding and hearing about the trend of stoicism. So I got this book. Uh, actually, Gillian Perkins, uh, she sent it to me as a gift. And, um, and I read it and I'm like, wow, this is pretty harsh. But over the period of 2020, I have totally embraced the philosophy of the Stoics. I'm, I, you know, subscribe to the Daily Stoic. I read tons of Ryan's books, uh, really into like, yes, theory here on YouTube and seek discomfort and Wim Hof actually, you know, pouring buckets of ice over your head, <laughs> all of this, these harsh practices I have found. Uh, have transformed my life. I mean, it's like, um, you know, just really pushing outside of your comfort zone and pushing through obstacles and getting through it. Uh, and this was the book that started me on that path and it's transformed my life. So, I mean, if it sounds like horrible to you or if it sounds intriguing or if you're totally on board with like stoicism and uh, all of this stuff, um, you know, across the board, uh, this, I really suggest, uh, giving it a shot and seeing, uh, what you think of it. Um, and maybe give it a few reads. Uh, I mean, your mindset really might change and it might change your life. I mean, it's really, it's a great book. Okay. This one, next one is kind of an odd one. It is a finance book. 
Uh, but it's this really practical finance book. I mean, you might say, oh, well, how does that pertain to, to me? Well, you know, hopefully as an indie author and self-published author, you are on your way to a six-figure or seven-figure career. So you are going to need to manage teams. You're going to need to manage your money. And um, and uh, this one, Profit First by Mike Michaelowitz. Wow, I said it right. Uh, I think. <laughs> uh, is a really, really cool method for dealing with, um, you know, managing your finances instead of spreadsheets or QuickBooks. He actually, I'm think, I think he's reviled by banks across the world, but he actually suggests that you open up uh, at least four bank accounts. We're talking probably more like six uh, in order to put your funds, your money in buckets so that you make sure that you have enough for things like taxes. And um, it's, a, it's a cool thing. And I um, have been planning to implement it, but now this year I am definitely going to implement it. So the way it works is you open up like a bank account for profit one for pay, one for tax, and one for operations. That's the way he suggests you kind of make the flow of the money um, go. Me being the rebel that I am, I'm actually going to flip it and do it opposite. <laughs> there you go. But it makes more sense to me to cover the operation expenses, then go into the pay, then the taxes, uh, and then put aside the profit for investing back into the business or buying investments. Um, so I'm going to, you know, <laughs> go against Mike, but I'm going to open those bank accounts, Mike. So uh, you might be happy with me. Last book on the list is going to be a Daily House publishing book. We worked on many, many amazing books this year, but I can't mention them all. So I thought that I would pick uh, one of our books that I thought was um, most useful to you as an author and the one that I picked was um, The Trauma Map by Dr. Carol Darsa. Um, so this is a, just a, an excellent, excellent book for um, dealing with stress and trauma. Now it can be, it's really useful if you've had severe childhood trauma, so, or PTSD, uh, but also it is very useful if uh, just day-to-day -day trauma. I mean, it is an exceptional life if you've lived without any trauma. Um, you know, I mean, it might not even be, uh, desirable. I mean, you know, we as humans go through death and grief and accidents and, uh, uh, so hardships. Uh, so, and I, you know, as writers, I think that, you know, we probably, most of us have trauma in our past that drives us to write and tell our stories. So I thought that this one would be really good. And it's just such a gentle, method of releasing tension and how trauma is held in the body and understanding how it is in the mind. Um, and it just takes you step by step through exercises uh, to really to really release yourself from the grip of how trauma can make you act to, to you might isolate yourself or uh, might be suffering from anxiety or depression. Uh, really a wonderful book, Dr. Carol Darsa. And I think that's it. That Those are my 10 picks out of the 50 or so books I read in the past year. Uh, I think they're all wonderful and will be very useful to you. And speaking of useful, if you like this type of content uh, and you are looking for a sustainable full-time at-home career as an author, then please do subscribe to this channel. Also get the word out if you want to share it with friends or like it. That way YouTube gets the message and uh, shares it with others on, across the YouTube platform. Uh, but I appreciate you watching this video and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks again, bestsellers. Mm -hmm.